you so very, very much. Thank you. I received that blessing. And let me say to each and every one of you, I'm inspired by you. I am invigorated by your passion for this great country. Now, as inspired as I am, I will do my very best to speak for less than 21 hours. But you, you will know I'm near wrapping up when I begin to read The Cat in the Hat. I am here this morning with a word of encouragement and exhortation. I want to say two things. Number one, these are extraordinary times. These are not typical times. The challenges facing this country are unlike any we have ever seen. You look at our Constitution, you look at our Bill of Rights, this is an administration that seems bound and determined to violate every single one of our Bill of Rights. I don't know that they've yet violated the Third Amendment, but I expect them to start quartering soldiers in people's homes soon. But if you look at the Bill of Rights, if you look at the First Amendment, this is an administration that has told servicemen and women that they cannot share their faith or risk discipline. This is an administration that has reprimanded an Air Force chapel in Alaska for writing in a blog post, there are no atheists in foxholes. Now, mind you, he was quoting President Dwight D. Eisenhower, who I might note has some passing familiarity with the military. This is an administration that is telling Christian companies like Hobby Lobby, is telling that the little sisters of the poor that they must provide abort efficients or pay millions of dollars in government fines. The Little Sisters of the Poor is an order of nuns that provides health care to the elderly poor. The federal government is coming after them saying they have to provide abort efficients as well. We've got the Second Amendment, which no administration in this history of this country has ever come after guns like this administration. Now, Vice President Joe Biden You know the nice thing? You don't need a punchline. <laughs> you just say his name, people laugh. But Vice President Joe Biden had some advice. He said, if anyone's attacking your home, just go outside with a double-barreled shotgun and fire both barrels in the air. Which is very, very good advice if it so happens you're being attacked by a flock of geese. We've seen the Fourth and Fifth Amendment, an administration whose drone policy and wiretap policies and your emails and your phone calls, their view is the privacy of the American people does not matter to them. And then there is the Tenth Amendment. An amendment I'm pretty sure they've gone and cut out of every copy of the Constitution in the, in the Library of Congress. We've seen an explosion of federal government power, none more important or significant or dangerous than Obamacare. We look at the state of our economy. In the last four years, our economy has grown, on average, 0.9% a year. There's only one other period since World War II of four consecutive years of less than 1% average growth. That was 1979 to 1982. It's coming out of the Jimmy Carter administration. It was the same failed economic policies, out of control spending and taxes and regulation, and it produced the exact same results. And we've seen a hapless, feckless foreign policy leading from behind said by a president who doesn't appreciate the concept of an oxymoron. <laughs> the
These are extraordinary times. Listen, every one of you is here because you love this country. Because you love freedom. And you know that we can't keep going down this road much longer. We're nearing the edge of a cliff. And our window to turn things around, my friends, I don't think it is long. I don't think it's ten years. We have a couple of years to turn this country around or we go off the cliff to oblivion. Throughout the history of the world, we have seen great nations rise and fall. And everyone here today is here today because we are not content to allow the United States of America to do anything but continue to rise and remain the greatest country on the face of this earth. Thank you, sir, for being here. I appreciate it. You, you, know, you, you know, look, it, look, it is a great thing that people can express their First Amendment rights. And I only wish the Obama administration respected First Amendment rights that much. But how do we turn things around? The second point I want to say is only the American people can turn this great nation around. Only the American people. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes tells us there's nothing new under the sun. As dire as things are, I want each of us to remember back to 1978, 1979. Those were dark times with 22% interest rates, double-digit unemployment, gas lines going around the block. Our hostages languishing in Iran for 444 days. The President of the United States said we got to accept malaise. The Soviet Union can't be stopped. Our foreign policy is detente, which I'm pretty sure is French for surrender. <laughs> and what were we all told over and over again? There's nothing you can do about it. It can't be done. The top marginal rate is 70% and it will stay 70% no matter what. The Soviet Union cannot be defeated. Government will always continue to grow and freedom in America will always recede. And yet what we saw across this country... Ma'am, th th thank you for being here. I wish you would participate in the democratic process through speaking respectfully. It seems that President Obama's paid political operatives are out in force today. And you know why? And you know why? Because the men and women in this room scared the living days. In 1980, in a situation every bit as dire as the one we face today, a revolution began across this country. The Reagan Revolution, and I'm looking at an awful lot of foot soldiers and generals from the Reagan Revolution. A lot of the men and women in this room bear the scars and understand the power that when the people rise up, ultimately sovereignty resides in one place and one place only in our Constitution. It is with we, the people. And I'm going to suggest a model for how we turn this country around in the next couple of years. And it is the model that we have been following together for the last couple of months to stop that train wreck, that disaster, that nightmare that is Obamacare.
don't know how many of y'all remember the movie The Usual Suspects. In that movie, they described the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was to convince the world he didn't exist. <laughs> you know what I'm curious? Is anybody left at the Organizing for America headquarters? I'm actually glad that the president's whole political staff is here instead of actually doing mischief in the country. I see it. In the movie The Usual Suspects, they said the greatest trick the devil ever played was to convince the world he didn't exist. Well, you know what? The greatest trick the left has ever played is to convince conservatives we cannot win. The media will tell us that believing in free market values, believing in the Constitution, believing in freedom, that those are extreme views. It is a lie. If it were not a lie, why do so many Democrats, when they're running, pretend to be conservatives? For that matter, why do so many Republicans do the same? The values each and every one of us are defending are values that every small town, every family, Every small business is understood in this country for centuries. That's what we're defending. That's what we're defending. <laughs>